Hey everyone, I'm Kaysen Callender and I'm the author of Felix Ever After, which is coming out on May 5th. Felix Ever After is about 17 year old Felix Love, who has never been in love and he's very aware of the irony of his name. He thinks that he might be uh, one marginalization too many because he is black, queer, and trans. He thinks because of his marginalizations, people um, just don't find him lovable. Uh, he's wrong, of course. Um, and the story starts out with uh, someone um, putting Felix through a transphobic attack. They take uh, pictures of him before he began to transition um, and puts up a gallery of that and dead names him. And so Felix goes on this quest for revenge against the person he thinks that it might have done it, uh, Declan Keen. Um, and then he turns out to be wrong, and that kind of lands him in this quasi-love triangle, where in the end um, he has to figure out that what's most important is uh, that he loves himself, regardless of what anyone else around him thinks. So, um, you know, I have been stuck in isolation for 30 days. I've not gone outside at all um, because of the pandemic. And, you know, I think that, you know, this is difficult for everyone. This is hard for, for absolutely everyone. But I think it can be really hard for queer and trans people also, um, like myself, because we already kind of have a difficulty finding our people. Um, we already found ourselves in isolating situations before. We're definitely in an isolating situation now. So, you know, I want to put importance into um, you know, making sure that you have people that you feel support you. Um, unfortunately, even though we're going through a pandemic, the transphobia, the anti-queerness doesn't stop. I myself actually just kind of went through um, a transphobic attack of my own. And it really took being surrounded by people that uh, I love and I know love me virtually, of course, um, to really kind of get me through that. So if you find yourself in a situation where you feel isolated, um, the only advice I can give is to, to try to find that community, whether it's online. I'm sure there are other people who are also struggling with that. Um, I've been lucky enough to find, uh, to start building a more of a community online through Twitter, through social media. I know there are a ton of Facebook groups for um, queer and trans people. Um, I think that that could be a really great way to find community that we all need right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read from the beginning of Felix Ever After. I love this book. I know I wrote it, but I still love it. So I'm going to read. <laughs> I'm going to read the beginning and um, I hope you all enjoy. Okay. We push open the apartment building's glass door out into the yellow sunshine. I feel like that was really loud. I tried to just pass. I'm going to start over. We push open the apartment building's glass door, out into the yellow sunshine that's a little too cheerful and bright. It's hot as hell, the kind of heat that sticks to your skin, your hair, your freaking eyeballs. Christ, why did we sign up for this again? Ezra says, his voice hoarse. It's so early. I could still be asleep. I mean, eleven isn't technically early. It's, you know, about halfway through the day. Ezra lights a blunt he pulls out of I don't know where and offers it to me and we suck on the last of it as we walk. Reggaeton blasts from a nearby park's cookout. The smell of smoke and burning meat wafts over, along with the laughter and screams of kids. We cross the street, pausing when a man on a bike zooms by with a boombox blasting Biggie, and we walk down the mold slick stairs of the Bedford Nordstrom G-Stop, sliding our cards through the turnstile just as a train rumbles up to the platform. The train doors slide shut behind us. It's one of the older trains with splotches of black gum plastered on the floor and messages written in Sharpie on the windows. R plus J equals forever. My first instinct is to roll my eyes, but if I'm honest with myself, I can feel jealousy sprouting in my chest. What does it feel like to love someone so much that you're willing to publicly bear your heart and soul with a black Sharpie? What is it like to love someone at all? My name is Felix Love, but I've never actually been in love. I don't know. The irony actually kind of fucks with my head sometimes. We grab a couple of orange seats, and Ezra wipes a hand over his face as he yawns, leaning against my shoulder. It was my birthday last week, and we got into the habit of staying up until 3 in the morning and lying around all day. I'm 17 now, and I can confirm that there isn't much of a difference between 16 and 17. 17 is just one of those in-between years, easily forgotten, like a Tuesday, stuck in between sweet 16 and legal 18. 
An older man dozes across from us. A woman stands with her baby stroller that's filled with grocery bags. A hipster with a huge red beard holds his bicycle steady. The AC is blasting. Ezra sees myself clutching myself against sees me clutching myself against the ice cold air, so he puts an arm over my shoulders. He's my best friend. Only friend, since I started at St. Catherine's three years ago. We're not like that. We're not together like that, not in any way, shape, or form. But everyone else always gets the wrong idea. The older man suddenly wakes up like he could smell the gay, and he doesn't stop staring at us, even after I stare right back at him. The hipster gives us a reassuring smile. Two gay guys cuddling in the heart of Brooklyn shouldn't feel this revolutionary, but suddenly it does. Maybe it's the weed, or maybe it's the fact that I'm much closer to being an adult, but I suddenly feel a little reckless. I whisper to Ez, want to give this guy a show. I nod in the direction of the older man, who has straight up refused to look away. Ezra smirks and rubs his hand up and down my arm, and I snuggle closer to him and rest my head on his shoulder. And then Ez goes from 0 to 100 as he buries his face in my neck, which, okay, I've never actually gotten a whole lot of action before, i.e. I've never even been kissed, but just feeling his mouth there kind of drives me crazy. I let out an embarrassing squeak gasp and Ezra puffs a muffled laugh against the same damn spot. I look up to see our audience staring, wide-eyed, totally scandalized. I wiggle my fingers at the man in a sarcastic half-wave, but he must take this as an invitation to speak. You know, he goes with a slight accent, I have a grandson who's gay. Ezra and I glance at each other with raised eyebrows. Um, okay, I say. The man nods. Yes, yes, I never knew. And then one day he sat me down and my wife Betsy before she passed. And then he was crying and he told us I'm gay. He'd already known for years, but he didn't say anything because he was so afraid of what we would think. I can't blame him for being afraid. The stories you hear and his own father heartbreaking. You'd think a parent would always love their child, no matter what. He pauses in his monologue, looking around as the train begins to slow down. Anyway, this is my stop. He stands as the doors open. You would like my grandson, I think. You two seem like very nice gay boys. And with that, the man has lost the platform as the woman with the baby stroller follows him out. Ezra and I look at each other and I burst out laughing. He shakes his head. New York man, he says. Seriously, only in New York. That's all I'm going to read for today, so stay safe, stay strong, peace and love.